Hello, good game. Welcome back, ghouls and goblins. As always, I hope you're having a magical day. Thanks for taking the time to like the video, help support me as a creator, and of course, support yourself and your complete D&D &D Rare Playset collection by becoming a subscriber. This triggers at 35,000 subs. Do not miss out on it. Tell your friends. And for more information and ways to support the channel, check out the link tree link in the description below or give it a Google. Hello, good game link tree. I'm sure it'll come up. Today, we have uh, Adventure into the Forgotten Realms Season 1 tier list. All of the decks that I myself have created ranked from what I feel is the strongest, most competitive builds down to the jankiest of the jank. Buckle up, get ready. I hope you guys are excited. Again, thank you all for watching. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and check out the link tree. Let's go. So first things first, 99% uh, of these decks are standard 20 22 there's only one deck for standard uh in here and this is the dungeon crawler which was an e-class deck or an e-tier deck anyways a uh, very fun deck uh, a very entertaining deck but pretty janky and not very consistent or competitive so um you know rounding out first our f tier decks i believe uh as the most important to look at we have uh, a lot of free to play decks here um the Free-to-play dragon recursion, bringing the flame dragon or the, the red dragon, I guess, back in with uh, Carter's Vicious Return, you know, dealing nine damage right there. Uh, very, very good. Next up, we have the free-to-play dice deck, and I'll try to make this maybe a little bit bigger so everybody can can see it here, uh, and then we'll just shuffle it around. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll scrooch myself over. <laughs> and, um, you know, the free-to-play dice deck was fun not competitive if you're not in an artisan environment however with the wild mage as an upgrade uh you know this deck is a competitive jank deck at that point which is cool we have the new mono white beginner deck you know laying in heat white weenies is the name of the game and uh you know it it works you know there's a uh, monk of the second hand as a new card included in the build uh which fits the archetype great we have a uh, turn two OTK and standard. Now this is the um, minion and you're using infuriates to buff up the minion and then bringing um, the uh, the mounts, terror mounter, the double strike dragon uh, into play, which is pretty cool. And this is actually the first deck I made when the set came out, which was a lot of fun. Quadruple strike, we are using um, vigilance plus Zariel, the new Planeswalker, which the emblem gives a uh, second combat phase. So if you all have Vigilance and you all have Double Strike, which we do have through Halvar, uh, you get Quadruple Strike, which is pretty crazy, super jank, um, but it is there. And then we made an Anti-Dragon deck in Rakdos, just trying to deal with Goldspan Dragon. Maybe more competitive than I have it rated here, but you know we had a lot of trouble piloting it. Moving in now to the E tier class decks, we have the uh, Unlimited Creatures, and this is Summoning Circle with, or, or Teleportation Circle, I should say, with, um, you know, lots of the artifact equipments with ETB effects. There's the Valkyrie Sword that can make an angel. There's the uh, Dwarf Hammer that can make a dwarf. There is even the Goblin's Mace that can make a goblin, which is really cool. So we're bouncing all of these, making a bunch of creatures all of the time, which is really, really cool. Uh, the Skull Slinger. This is Is It or Prismari Demilich, which is pretty cool. So casting multiple copies of Demilich uh, for free or at a highly reduced cost from our graveyard, from our hand, wherever, it does not matter. Uh, and I had a lot of fun with that deck as well. And then we have the Infinity Zorn combo. We are making uh, you know, just a ton of treasures through Zorn and uh, sinking that in to uh, our opponent via the star mount and uh you know that's great because we're using maskwood nexus and magda uh, this is a deck i just showcased it's a must watch uh for sure very very fun deck but at the end of the day it's probably not super competitive not super consistent but um yeah you're just going infinite with treasures through zorn and maskwood nexus uh and <laughs> the chariot and you see how many cards are involved it's it's a time. And then Dungeon Crawler, right? We're venturing into the dungeons. We're using all of our favorite knights from Standard. Everything else is Standard 2022, 20, except the Dungeon Crawler deck here. And then Zed Tier Zombies. You know, we're doing our best. This was our first zombie deck. It actually performed really good when we first made it. But as the meta be 
begun uh, or began to settle, uh, you know, it's not as consistent as we wanted it to. And it's definitely something that we need to go back and revisit at this point. And then the Scoot Swarm, again, um, you know, it didn't compete as much as we would have liked it to. Uh, something that we can revisit and hopefully make a more competitive uh, variation of it. Um, but nonetheless, it's still a really fun deck to play. And if you have the cards, why not try it out for a bit? Into our E, or sorry, our D tier decks now. Abzan Control, very good to remove everything. However, in the current standard best of 122 meta, there is not a ton of room for control deck outside of, um, you know, the Demir Control. It worked great, but I definitely think that there is room for improvement. And then we have Flower Power. This is a Bant Planeswalker deck. Um, you know, more jank here. The control actually works quite nice. And we're using Kazmania's plus two ability on Master of Flowers to make it a dragon as quickly as we can. Cosmic Black Staff, which is actually, you know, one of my favorite D tier decks. Um, using the new Black Staff to animate your artifacts. It's a ton of fun, right? Um, so we're actually even using Vecna in this deck, which is, uh, you know, unique. And this is something that we've continued to work with a little bit. And, uh, you know, stay tuned for a new version of it. Time Dragons, Jezekai Dragons, you know, it's doing the do. It's Prismari Dragons with a little added sauce on the side. Um, you know, it's great, but not competitive as just the general Prismari Dragon deck. Synergy Syndicate is the Selesnya Magecraft deck. Um, you know, light on lands, heavy on spells, utilizing some Magecraft to get really, really quick kills, but the consistency isn't quite there. And then uh, Dead Dragons, um, Jund Dragons, we are um, reanimating Bone Dragon. We have Emerstrom Predator. We're self-milling. It worked very nice, but it was missing a little bit of life gain, I felt, at the end of the day. Into our C tier decks now. Dragon Gold. And this is just uh, Gruel Dragons, right? We're using um, the Dragon's Guard Elite with some fight effects. And, of course, Goldspan Dragon is in there as well because you just have to do it. And then Dungeon Runner, this is an Azorius Venture deck. Uh, very, very good. I really, really liked it. It has Rune Seeker in it, so you're doubling the value of each of the rooms that you enter in the dungeons, and then you're just going through the dungeons as quick as you can. A great deck to check out. Um, and then we have Double Strike, which is pretty cool. So this is just Halvar with runes, right? We have Runeforge Champion in the deck. Uh, any equipped creature or uh, Enchanted Creature, I guess, would have Double Strike. Um, so, you know, using the green rune for Trample and the white rune for Lifelink. A pretty competitive deck, in all honesty, for what it is. Azorius Fortel, this is a turn four, all runs Epiphany through uh, Nico's Intervention and the Fortel of the Epiphany. Uh, pretty crazy stuff, but, you know, it definitely needs some work and control in the best of one meta. Isn't quite there right now. Azorius Dragons, uh, you know, very similar to the Fortel, but it's kind of all over the map. We have lots of one ofs, uh, just doing our best. And uh, personally, the deck was a little bit of a letdown, but a lot of the community members said that they had success with it. So I did want to include it a little bit higher than where I personally wanted it, which was the D tier. Finally, Haste Flyers. Uh, this has Goldspan Dragon. This has Adult Goldspan Dragon. It has Sparring Regimen. Um, you know, good luck to your opponent. I feel so sorry for you if you are an aggro deck because that life gain haste with sparring regiment is absolutely ridiculous. Moving now into our B tier decks, Paladin Goblins. This is using Paladin class, is using the mono red goblins. It has the rally of ranks, um, you know, for the uh, boosting of those goblins. Uh, it performs very well. I really, really like it. Toski tokens, you know. You have the Clarion Spirit, you're making a bunch of tokens, you're attacking with Toski, getting a big draw. It is what it is. Then we have the Nightmare Factory, which I believe was the turn three Skeleton Swarm, which is uh, a lot of fun. Using the Treasure Ramp to put an early Swarm out, and then we have the Spider Queen as backup. So, uh, you know, that's a great deck as well. The Imperial Dragons, which is a Grixis Dragons deck. You know, a similar thing where, you know, it's Prismari Dragons with added twist. Um... It's just more of the same, basically. And then we have Celestia Life Gain. This is using the Innkeeper mixed with the Moon Dancer, which is great because whenever a creature enters play, you gain life. 
whenever you gain life, scry one. And then you have the Rangers class, which allows you to play creatures off the top. And a lot of people are like, why don't you run Cleric class? Well, we already have that handled. What we need is to scry those lands off the top of our library so we can fold as many creatures into play, just like we used to do with the Great Henge. And this is, you know, three card synergy, not as good as the Henge, um, but it is, it is very, very good because you can go on uh, for quite a while through the scry and play the creatures from the top, removing the land. Next up, Turbo Dungeons. Um, you know, this is this is good. This is like the other Dungeons deck on Jet Fuel. Um, adding green with, uh, you know, the Planeswalker, uh, amongst other things. So it performs amazing. And if your opponent can't remove your uh, pieces as you accumulate value, uh, it really will snowball them. And uh, not only that, but it's a fun deck to play as well. Into our A tier decks, we have Barb's class, or Bard's class, sorry. Um, I thought this card was jank. I didn't think it would work, but wow. Oh my gosh, this deck pops off. And similar to the Rangers class, Moon Dancer, with Bard's class, whenever you play a legendary, you draw two and can play those cards. Uh, and they get a spell cost reduction as well. Um, so you can play a bunch of creatures, flood the field, and just go absolutely bonkers. We have the Wet Squirrel, which is my version 2 simic stompy very very good it's mono green stompy with the added interaction um, of quandrix command decisive denial uh, we have glass pool mimic to copy the werewolf amongst other things and then lifelink dragons um rakdos we're using the poet's quill with emerstrom predator wolf right so you have an indestructible lifelink creature that grows every turn um, that's going to get the job done and next up mono red goblins Personally, didn't perform for me great, but I know that people within the community had success with it and are having success with it. Um, so, you know, it's a deck that you see all around, um, and it might be more consistent, in my opinion, than the dual color goblin deck. And then finally, upgrading one of my favorite decks, uh, the Land Summoner. This is Cyclone Summoner. Simic Ramp, get that Cyclone Summoner out, bounce everything, uh, which is just a good time, right? Finally, our S tier decks, Mono White, Milky Smooth for Standard 2022, the upgraded version performing very, very well. And we have Mono Green as well, you know, Mono White, Mono Green. Then we have uh, the beloved uh, Is It Giants. This works really good. Battle of Frost and Fire, Cyclone Summoner, I love it. And the Demir Control deck, uh, very, very good. We would also have in the S tier, Prismari Dragons, however, I felt that everybody else probably beat that horse dead already, so I'm not going to bother. Uh, you guys know all about that already, but it itself is definitely an S-tier deck as well. So hopefully through this process, you kind of gained a better idea of all the different decks that I've done in the last uh, month or a little while, and you can uh, go on a hunt and look for the appropriate build, right? Of course, all of these are in my recent uploads. You can go check them out, and I'll have a few of my favorites linked below uh, for each tier. I'll pick one uh, to check out just for your leisurely watching experience. Of course, thank you all for your time and attention. Let me know if you like these style of videos in the comments below. And of course, subscribe to the channel to win a complete rare place of the DND expansion in Arena. That triggers at 35,000 subs. Like the video, check out the link tree to support through the Patreon, through the Twitch, through the YouTube, through the affiliate links into the AM, E-Win Racing, uh, you name it. You can definitely find a way to help a guy out. Have a magical day, most importantly, and we'll see you soon in the next.